Hello, this is Golden Dragon Book Reviews, and today we're going to read some and review Ace, the Aesop for Children with pictures by Milo Winter, and written by Aesop, of course. Aesop, just to give you a little background, was a Greek slave who was freed, and then he started writing fables. This book is extremely old. It's actually from 1938. It's almost 100 years old, and this actually has 135 of Aesop's fables, some of which are, um, the, the lessons are repeated, some of which are completely unique. We're going to read three, and overall review, um, what Aesop, what, um, they had in common, and how they are different. Young one and then the Aesop are for children. You are come nida. You take a green, um, green, Saram and Milo Winter. You take a ton to back some spalion as a print on taking the ton to see ton to back some spalion in Kakoi, Tengyon, ten taking the Aesop and um. 그리스의 아 그리스의 노예였습니다. 노예하고 나서 책 이런 작은 책을 썼습니다. 작가 됐습니다. 이 책에는 135 어, 스토리가 있습니다. 그 135 스토리에서 세 가지를 읽고 에이솝의 어, 작은 스토리에 뭐가 다른지 뭐가 똑같은지 다볼 겁니다. 시작하자. The peacock. The peacock, they say, did not at first have the beautiful feathers in which he now takes so much pride. These, Juno, whose favorite he was, granted him to him one day when he begged for her um, begged her for a train of feathers to distinguish him from the other birds. Then, decked in his finery, gleaming with emerald, gold, purple, and azure, he strutted proudly among the birds. All regarded him with envy. Even the most beautiful pheasant could see that his beauty was surpassed. Presently, the peacock saw an eagle soaring high up in the blue sky and felt a desire to fly as he had been accustomed to do. Lifting his wings, he tried to rise from the ground, but the weight of his magnificent train held him down. Instead of flying up to greet the first rays of the morning sun or bathe in the rosy light among the floating clouds at sunset, he would have to walk the ground more encumbered and oppressed than any common barnyard fowl. The lesson would be, do not sacrifice your freedom for the sake of pomp and show. Okay, why do they call it the peacock? We know it's about the peacock, but, like, why is it just peacock? Maybe peacocks and the birds? Well, several reasons. One is this, um, Greek. In Greece, this actually was a true, um, myth that was told. And another reason is a, cannot, uh, a peacock cannot fly, and, um because of its feathers, right? And it's very beautiful as well. So, um, Aesop wrote a um, fable because he saw a peacock trying to take flight. And failed, obviously. Oh, trying to take flight. Well, that's um, very rare. And, like, why would you see a... Why would you not? S why would you see a peacock trying to take flight when it probably knows it can't? Well, that part was legend. Um, we don't know if a sub actually saw a peacock try and take flight. Um, but um, that's what legend says. So that's what okay. I'm saying. Makes sense. Where Gongjak Sega. 이른 제목이요. 이쁘, 이쁜 어, 깃털 때문에 나를 수 없는 거입니다. 
이삽을 왜 공작새가 날 푸시푼다고 생각했을까? 그거는 진짜 우리가 모르는 거입니다. 그 이숲은 그 공작새가 날라 다니 날라 다니려고 하는 것을 봤다고 했는데 진짜 보는 보는지 안 봤는지 그 우리는 모르겠습니다. Who and I will read the fox without a tail. A fox had si- and succeeded at last after much painful tugging and getting away. But he had to leave his beautiful bushy tail behind. For a long time he kept away from other foxes, for he knew that enough that they w- would all make fun of him and crack jokes and laugh behind his back. But it was hard for him to live alone. And at last he thought of a plan that would perhaps help him out of his trouble. He called a meeting of all the foxes saying that he had some gr- of great importance to tell the tribe. When they were all gathered together, the fox without a tail got up and made a long speech of those foxes who had come to harm of their tails. But one had but this one had been caught by hound, hounds when his tail had become entangled to the hedge. And and one had not been able to run fast enough because of the weight of his bush. Besides, it was well known he said that it meant foxes simply for their tails which they cut off as prizes of the hunt. With such proof of the danger and useless of having a tail, said the master fox, he would advise every fox to cut it off. But if he valued life and safety, when he had finished talking, an old fox arose and said, smiling, Master Fox, kindly turn around for a moment and you shall have your answer. When the poor fox without a tail turned around, there arose such a storm of jeers and hooting, he saw how useless it was to try longer to persuade the foxes part of their tails. Do not listen to the advice of him who seeks to the lower you to his own level. Why would Aesop choose a fox without a tail? Well, he would choose a fox without a tail because it's like really unnecessary that a fox without a tail would try and like wouldn't have a table tail and it's like kind of interesting that a fox or like it's kind of like a book needs to have some something that a lot of people are like why does a fox have a tail why does it have a tail and he wants other people to enjoy it and like if someone saw the title fox without a tail they would like most um likely think why would a fox have a tail and wonder why i mean how it lost its tail so that's why he chose it for the reason of being fun okay i'll read mine the bat and the weasels a bat blundered into the nest of a weasel who ran up to catch him and eat him. The bat begged for his life, but the weasel would not listen. You are a mouse, he said, and I am a sworn enemy of mice. Every mouse I catch, I am going to eat. But I am not a mouse, cried the bat. Look at my wings. Can mice fly? Why, I am only a bird. Please let me go. The weasel had to admit the mouse bat was not a mouse, so he let him go. But a few days later, the foolish bat went blindly into the nest of another weasel. This weasel happened to be a bitter enemy of birds, and 
and soon he had the bat under his claw, ready to eat him. You are a bird, he said, and I am going to eat you. What? cried the bat. I, a bird, why all birds have feathers. I am nothing but a mouse. Down with all cats is my motto. And so the bat escaped with his life a second time. The lesson is set your sails with the wind. Also, go with the flow. Why did the bat actually say um, he wasn't a bird? Because he wanted to escape with his life. I mean, why would he lie? Why would he lie? And he knew he should know that the weasel would know that he's a bat. Birds have wings, and that's all. Like some birds don't have feathers, maybe fur. Like okay. Like or like tiny feathers that looks like fur from far away. Why would he? Um, not go with the wind. Basically, go with the flow. Um, why would he not go with the wind if he kn knew the wind usually isn't on the ground? Like, like I'm saying that more wind is in the sky, so he should know that he learned a lesson that he, the weasel nest would be on the ground. And the and he wouldn't want he wouldn't want to go in it again. Okay, so um, we're talking. So several things. Um, you said that um, this book was written thousands of years ago. So not many people were educated. Not many people knew the difference between bats and birds at all. So it's one reason. And um. The bat is smart. He knows that um, the weasel, because because the weasel said that he hated mice, um, the bat would most likely lie to save his own life so he can get away, right? And a bat is a very versatile creature. They're the only mammal with wings, so they can pretend they're a bird or a mouse or something like that, right? So, and um, Aesop did say that the weasel went into another um, nest and use it and the, the, the advice is set your sails with the wind so it's not ba it, so it's not literally put your sail into the wind but figuratively go do what everybody else is doing if you don't know what to do or like um, try and fall go along with um, another thing like is a book so many unlikely things will happen it's not real life right and fur is much different than feathers, okay? Yeah, that's right. There. This is the end of our Aesop for children, with pictures by Milo Winter.